Today on The Grid, we are crushing the hopes and dreams of some anonymous photographers as we do blind critiques of their photo, which is where Eric and I wear blindfolds and we just guess how good or bad your photos are simply based on your name. We have a bunch of giveaways. we got some news. we got all sorts of fun stuff. And it all starts in 21.3 seconds. Let's go! One, two, three, the Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should, too. Go to platypod.com. All right, we're here. There Yay! We <laughs> I was doing some housekeeping. Sorry. That twenty three point four seconds went quick. Man, did it ever! You can't. So we're count here. On it. We're here for blind photo critiques. I know Scott's getting all the uh, blind photo critiques ready, right? Yeah, now, so. I just messed up one thing here, but I'm about to fix. Welcome it. to there the we grid. Go. Welcome, welcome. Um, uh, what's going on? Uh, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Okay, <laughs> so number one. Uh, Next week, a week from tomorrow, I am uh, heading to the NECCC mm -hmm. conference, the 75th annual conference. So a bunch of these uh, uh, users groups, photography groups up in the mm -hmm. New England area New come England, together. Yeah. And they've been doing this for, for 75 years to do this big conference. It's huge. And I'm, this is my first time speaking there. I'm there in person. I'm really excited about it. It is in Amherst, Massachusetts. And I will be there starting next Thursday. Go to NECCC photoconference.org for all of the info. So there it is. There it is. Uh, at the uh, home of the most beautiful logo you will ever mm -hmm. see. It's yes. this diamond anniversary of the 75th. Anyway, but that's coming. I'm actually looking forward to it. I've talked to people that have, have been to it and they just rave about this conference. So I'm very, very excited to be there. My first time. I love getting to speak uh, in, in, you know, in person. Also, today oh, wow. is the last online registration day. So if not, you just have to show up and, and pay at the door. So today is the last day, July 6th. But if today's July 6th, Eric, what's tomorrow, July 7th? Tomorrow's <laughs> July 7th, yeah. That's more to it than that. It's the day after July 6th. Mm, keep going. <laughs> I don't know. What is July 7th? It's my birthday. <laughs> my birthday tomorrow. Yep. And guess what? I'm calling in sick. <laughs> it's gonna, I'm not. Don't, don't look for me here tomorrow. I'm going to be uh, hanging under the movies. I'm going to go see the Minions. I'm going to go have... Ooh, nice. I'm going to try out a new burger place in, in downtown Tampa. I I'm, thought you'd go see Thor. Thor's coming out tomorrow. You know what it is, though? I'm way behind on 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 the whole Marvel series, and I got to start from the beginning. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I, you go, and you're like, well, why does that guy hate him? And you you have to know what's going on. So, I mean, where are you going for dinner on your 40th birthday party? Uh, we're not going till Friday. We are going yeah. to Maggiano's. Mm-hmm. I love my. It's like a family yes. tradition. We just go to Maggiano's. I go to Maggiano's twice a year at the opening instructor dinner for Photoshop <laughs> World and on my birthday. So there you That's go. where I'm going. Now, you would be going to Carmine's if there was one here. If right? there was a Carmine's yeah. anywhere near me, I have to go to either Nassau, Atlantic City, New York, York yeah. Las Vegas. I'm going to be in, in none of those places. Though on my birthday one year, my wife did surprise me, woke me up in the morning and said, get up, we're going to Carmine's. And we literally flew to New York, went to a Broadway show, lunch at Carmine's, and she bought me a Gibson Les Paul guitar. And that was for your 21st birthday. And my son went yeah. with me. That was not my 21st. Because that would have been, what, 14 years ago. So, yeah, I think it was only like, what, 14, 15 yeah, years 15 ago. 15 years ago. All right. Anyway, um, what else we got? Uh, we've got a bunch of giveaways today. Uh, oh, and what else? What else well, we got? We've got a big conference coming up. We have a huge, huge conference. conference coming up. Yeah. It's the Photoshop World Conference. Uh, it's going to be all virtual this that. year. You got a little lower third up there. Oh, a lower a third. third. Look at that. Ow. Boom. Pow, pow, pow. pow. Anyway, it's coming world. up, as you can see, August 30th to September 1st. It's a three-day, three-track conference, and it's going to be awesome. And uh, it's, it is proving to be very popular already. So if you want to go now, save money, yep. register soon. And, uh, and, of course, you get the whole thing archived for a year. Oh, not I see only, a Kuna shot in there. Not only that, Space. the other thing that you get if you, you know, register for Photoshop World, you get a six-month membership to Kelby One. Yeah, so, it's all go. good. It's all good. All good. So go to PhotoshopWorld.com and sign up, and you will love it. Yes, so I'm very excited about it. We got a oh, lot yeah. of great trainers joining us. Oh, yeah, we do. All over the world. Oh, yeah. So, International trainers. Yep. All right.
besides that, so that's all good. Um, I can't think of it. It seems like there was something else, but it'll hit me later. But uh, we have tons of prizes. We have prizes tons of prizes we're going to be giving galore. away. So galore. Galore. As usual, uh, we're going to be giving away a bunch of prizes on the show. First, we're going to be giving away the Platypod multi accessory kit here. So, this is the accessories you need to take your Platypod, as they say, to the next level, right? To the next level. Or level, unlock level. the full potential. Level, level, level. It really level. does. But um, yeah, so there's that. And then Scott wrote some books. I don't know if you guys know. But Ooh, I got a new one. You got a new Ooh, one. But where, it's supposed to be here oh. on the set. Oh, no. Where is it? Oh, look oh, here it, it is. Look Come it. sliding Ooh. in. Whoa. Look whoa, at that. Whoa. What? So this is the brand new edition. Where am I looking? Over there. Hi. Brand new edition of my, my book. So this is called How Do I Do That in a Lightroom? One of my best-selling books. And um, this is the updated version. It has all the new masking stuff in it and everything. Now, I, I believe that at this point, only the Kindle version is available. The print okay. one is on press. So you can get it on Kindle or, you know, ebook versions and stuff. You can go to rockynook.com or you can go to Amazon, get the Kindle version. But the um, we'll be giving away uh, a copy of the print version. Now, I'm supposed to get some some freebies for the, um, for the, there it is right there. No, that's, is that the old one? No, that's the new one? No, that's the... Yeah, yeah. It says August 30th, 2022. Oh, yeah, no, that's the one. That's the one. Okay. All right, so that's the updated version of this with all the new stuff. And lots of... I I, I rewrote this book from scratch because it's been a minute since I've done this oh, book. Oh, and Lightroom's been and way Lightroom. updated. Oh, the masking stuff. You know what was yeah. nice? My editor's a photographer, right? Mm -hmm. He calls me and said, dude, I finally get... I read your chapter on masking, and now I get it. Yes. Now I get why it's so amazing. Now I get why everyone's excited about it. So amazing. Like, they were... He was really... I was... Well, so you, you know... It's the most exciting thing to come to Lightroom in years. Oh, in years. years. And it does... And I, dude, I'm... Even in my the other book I'm writing right now, I'm doing some really cool stuff with the masking. I live really the, cool stuff. Live in the masking. Yeah. Live in the masking. Love the masking. Live it. Anyway, it. so that's 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 like uh, it's 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 on press. But there Kim is going to send me some some freebie giveaway uh, ebook versions of it. So we're giving this away. Then. We're going to give so, away a print version, but so you don't get it until it comes give out. Give away in a print. print version soon. You can enter to to win a how to do that in Lightroom or. You wrote another book, right? I have so, written. This is I've written two books now. Yeah, two books now. So we're going to be giving away the travel photography book by yes, Scott Kelby. It's a lovely book. And if then you like to look travel. it. You what? wrote a third book. I right? did write. I've written three books now. Three books now. The Lightroom Classic books. So we're going to be giving that one away. So all three of those books we're going to be giving away on the show, as well as on ones giving away Effects 2022, which is a great effects plugin. And then we're going to be giving away a V flat from V flat world. This is for us only. So the, the V flat world. So we got the one V flat and then we're going to be also giving away one dual board XL. These are really cool. They get, we got one in the studio we've been shooting with and it's really neat how realistic it looks, you know, so definitely something to check out and everybody gets 10% off anything from V flat world. If you use the code Kelby 10, at checkout, you'll get yourself 10% off. And then as well, we've got Spug Mug. We're going to be uh, you know, playing another one of their This Lens series uh, Ooh, yeah. on the break. But you can also get 20% off Smug Mug. We're going to be dropping that into the chat. So uh, make sure you look for that link in the chat. It's a long bit.ly link that you'll be able to get in there. But that'll take you right to your 20% uh, discount. So hey, you know, you know what was funny? I got an email from Amazon this week. Mm -hmm. You know, Amazon sends you emails that say, hey, we recommended, we recommend these books or mm -hmm. we recommend yeah. this stuff. So look, take a look. Can you see mine on the screen here? You got me? So look, here's the email. They recommended to me my travel photography book, <laughs> my Lightroom classic book, my seven point system. How do I do that in Photoshop? My iPhone photography book and some other stuff, but who cares? <laughs> the, the, the first five were my own books. And I turned on my wife in the show to her and go, you know what? Amazon knows me. I do love these books. That's it. That's I love it. all of Amazon these books. Amazon knows me. I want them all. Anyway, <laughs> Amazon knows me. That's funny. All right. What are we doing? So, critiques. It's blind critique day. So let's yes. um so here's what it is. Blind. Eric and I wear blindfolds. Yes. We read the person's name out loud 
and then we just guess if their images are any good. No, here's how it works. <laughs> the word blind means that we do not say the person's name. So we don't know who sent these in. Unless um, you watermark your images. Unless you watermark then your we images don't, then. We can't do I don't anything. think anybody did today. Right. I think we're okay. We've so got past um, that. We've got past that finally. We got that past that. And we're gonna try to go quickly today because I want to get to as many as we can. Um and we're, we're going to give you just an honest critique. And, and the reason why it's blind and we don't mention your name is because if, if it's really good, we need to tell you. If you need work, we need to tell you. We need to be honest with you because nobody else will, right? Yeah. So, we're not here to, like, crush dreams or hurt feelings. We're here to we help. Are. A little. We are a little. No, no. We are really. Speaking I, we of make that crushing. Joke. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> crushing somebody's so, face. <laughs> so these are submitted by viewers. And um, we got uh, that shot here. And that shot here. First off, these are all great. Right off the bat, where I, I definitely the first and the third one are like the yeah, peak but, action. Right, and that's the thing is is yeah. and we constantly talk about situations where photographers are just here's a guy standing there with yeah. the ball. Here's a boxer. If these with his, two guys were yeah. just squared up, yeah, with that guy getting the 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 kick to the face. Yeah, you know that's now, the moment. The unfortunate thing is, and I looked at the I just looked at the um, what you call it. Um, XF data. Metadata, yeah. This was taken at one one thousandth of a second, but there's is, yeah. there there is a little movement. And what's weird is and I am I'm, I'm nitpicking here because these are good photos. Yes. His leg is in focus here. This arm is in focus. These are out of focus. Now I don't know if Topaz could save that. I think it, it very possibly could. You could bring back some, definitely. Yeah. Now, what what's happening here too is you've got movement, which is good. I just wish I wish his face and the foot were in focus instead yeah, of his it's like the leg. focal point. Like I can see every weird. hair in his leg, and then it's kind of messy up here. Now, you might be able to just spot sharp in that area. That's why I'm telling you because I think this is such a good shot that you might be able now, to. Now, part uh, of that has to do with not only that the shutter speed, but what it, well, it has to do with the shutter speed, yeah. um, where it's not freezing. That the foot and the face are moving yeah. so fast at it's that so point. It's so fast. It I had mean, to be fifteen hundred yeah. or two thousand, one two thousandth of a second. So sometimes that's also the but, thing with shutter speed is just getting it up a little higher yeah. to give you more sharpness yeah. from the stopping power. Now, the, and this one is, I mean, a peak moment of action. These yeah, are these I are both that great. One. The, the, this is really good. It's it a completely good. different shot, but it's really good. And this person is just, they're, they're shooting lights out. So, so good start. Very, yeah. very good. I'm giving you love. Feel the love. Be the love. Make the love. Love the peak moments. All right. I'm going to get ready for the next one. And, and he's going to, uh, yep. Eric's going to give some shout outs real quick. Yes. Yeah, so we've got people joining all over the place. So let's see. we got Andrew saying, hey, hey, from the UK. Then we got Barb saying hello from rainy Eugene, Oregon. Uh, we have... Masib from Poland saying hi. Terser from Bangladesh. We got uh, Paula joining us from a cloudy Orlando. Tom from California. Paul over the way from Michigan. Then we've got uh, Carrie joining us from Ohio. Will from Centersville. So we got people joining us all over the place. Yay. Welcome to the show. Just leave us a comment comment in the comments tell us where you're from got any questions or anything yeah like and that. also did you tell them how to enter to yeah win? so if you want to enter the contest just leave us a comment in the comments telling us what you want to win and then at the end of the show we'll pick a winner and yeah send and you're entered that's it but it's important yeah tell us what you want to win tell us what you want to win. win this book or that yes. book or the the palapot of auto whatever yeah. okay let's look at this next one we've got uh, three images here Now, it mm. looks like three different photographers took these. It definitely does. But luckily, it's three good photographers. Three good <laughs> photographers. All right. This is a very well-crafted image. The it, posing is what needs the work. Yeah, the posing is not awesome. Yeah. Uh, one of the problems is the, the gap between their head. Yeah. Like, if she was leaning back a little and he was leaning into her, that gap doesn't mean we're in love. It, it means we're brother and sister. So, <laughs> so I think you could have, posing-wise, I think we could have got a better pose. But they did something that, that drives me crazy, and they did, they did it right, is they didn't light the floor. They've got mm -hmm. fall off. The fall off, yeah. I mean, they, their lighting is right on the money. I, I would think it could be a little warmer on them. I think maybe be, yeah. a yellow gel on them, but I, I'm nitpicking. It's very well done. Uh, I like the clouds. I like your composition. 
and and I we talk about this a lot on the show here where people are trying to show the background so they take this super super wide shot mm -hmm. the people are really small they got the subjects large in the frame which is good and you still see lots of background this is a very well crafted shot yeah. um this is nice it's a nice moment i unfortunately i'm not crazy about the arm coming in here and you might be able to still make a great photo here without a blurry yeah, because arm. The, the arm, if, if you saw something over there, like a basketball or, you know, if you saw something in there, it'd be different. Yeah. It, it's, that's just not, it's not awesome. I do kind of like this. Yeah, that helps. And, and you don't know what the story is, but you know there's a story. Yeah. You don't know, is the story someone just got hurt? Yeah. Uh, we just lost? You know what is you yeah, know, those that that's the other side of sports it's the celebration or the agony it's taking those yeah. shots it's not always yep. like you, you you know the ball being the subject but sometimes right. you there, don't want the there's ball. there's the game and yeah, then there's, there's the story, the story. behind the game exactly. there's more to it than just this and this is nicely done uh, i generally don't like the blurry stuff in front of the picture but they did a good job with it this is one of the rare cases where they did the blurry stuff and it worked so in the blurry stuff is in the right place. This is very hard to do if you do this in when you're sh when you're shooting it. You just have to be very cognizant of what's in that foreground. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. well done. Just very good. Very nice. Uh, really, no, no, just that little minor critique, but good, yeah. good stuff. Good, so question good here from stuff. Malcolm Scott is: How big of a reflector should I buy for a couple shoot? If it's just two so people, I think talk about that couples there. Yeah. If you're just first, I'll say this. Malcolm, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of reflectors. I would rather you buy a big diffuser and, and, and get beautiful light rather than just bouncing the sun back in. I'm, not, I'm just not a big, I mean, I, 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 there are times where a reflector is appropriate and you should probably get a 40 inch. You can get a 30 or a 42, I think is the next one up. A 40 or 42 inch should be, should be plenty. But I look at Malcolm, get one that's like a five in one. So you get white, you get black, you get silver, you get gold, and then you unzip it. And inside is a diffuser. Right. A diffuser is the magic for, for outdoor portraits. A reflector is just going to put, it's going to take the sunlight. And if you have someone that actually knows how to, people always do reflectors wrong. It's very and, hard to do reflectors because the where you have to hold them, how high you have to hold them. In yeah, order and, to and people don't want to do that. So you always they see people they holding hold them down, down low because it's and very then comfortable. It's, it's uplighting. It looks terrible. You got to get the yeah. reflector way high. I'm telling you, Malcolm, <laughs> go for the diffuser. Yeah. All right. And then you're, then, then you're reflecting a spot of light. You're not reflecting a diffused light like yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you All go. All around. Okay, here we go. Got some uh, like urban kind of looking images here, kind of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So I like two out of three of these. I, I like your post processing. I like your composition. What? Unless you were shooting this for the Tennessean. I was going to say the same thing. When Take you the text see out. when you see text, you go and you read the text, and there there's. I I kind of like Jay Mazel thing. Yeah, That's I like a, this stuff <laughs> up here. Unless I'm the not, text is adding to it, like yeah. you said, if you're doing yeah. it for them, yeah, and then keep it in. This is cool. This is really cool. This is kind of cool. This has cool potential. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not a bad shot, but I think the star of the shot is not the dirt. I think the star of the shot is this. So there's probably a, a better yeah, mixed in with that way. sky and the let's and the, hit X and that flips our yeah. That's the crop. Yeah, uh, there's probably. A, a cooler crop. shot in there that's i think that's quite a bit cooler right there yeah. but i would i would fix the building so do you notice that take a look at my hand here the building is going like this like it's not straight it's and curving. it's not leaning it's actually curved so you have a little you know you should probably fix that because it's a, it looks like it's going to be a it's going to be there's going to be a lawsuit there. yeah so uh, and you can fix that that's easy definitely enough a problem yeah, you, you can fix that. But uh, that's just from your wide angle lens. But this is a cool shot. I think that crop is way stronger. All right. But anyway, pretty cool stuff. All right. You know, we're actually doing pretty good today. Yes. So we that, do need to take a break. Though. Breaks are good. Yeah. So we'll, we good. need to take a break. And right. then we come back, we can uh, we can knock out a bunch. We got a yeah. bunch more, right? Oh, yeah. yeah there you go. Lot. We got lots more. Oh, we'll be back, et cetera, yeah, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, that. <laughs> Yeah.
I think the perspective photography has given me is invaluable. I have experienced the most beautiful things that nature and our planet has to offer. Capturing these places and sharing joy of being out there is quite rewarding. A lot of it has to do with trying to emulate the feeling that I have when I'm out in these places. How can I capture this so that a viewer can be there with me? When you're in a place, you feel it 100%. You can smell, you can hear, you can feel the temperatures, and it all combines into this magical moment Travel photography is back. And the smartest thing you can do when it comes to traveling anywhere in the world, like Prague, is plan ahead. Yeah, and Prague is an incredible location. I think it's one of the most special places, one of the most photogenic cities in all of Europe. And now that we're all back out traveling, I want to be your guide. I want to show you 21 amazing places to shoot in Prague. Now, I'm going to give you the locations. I'm going to give you the, the shooting tips. We're going to talk about camera gear, what time to go, what you need to know, what not to do, what to skip, all that kind of stuff. And I've got some amazing locations. I had a friend of mine, he's a photo fixer, he lives in Prague. He helped me uncover these great locations. And now, together, we're going to share them with you. You're going to be able to come back with the most amazing pictures from your trip you've ever taken. You're going to make all of your friends and neighbors jealous. They're all going to want to go to Prague. Everyone's going to want to go to Prague after you see the amazing pictures that you'll be able to make there. So come and check out my brand new course. It's a photographer's guide to Prague and it's exclusively at KelbyOne.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we are back. Uh, so there you got to see a little bit of the Photoshop World uh, teaser. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, that was the Smug Mug series that we've been talking about. Uh, and man, they do a good job with those things. They're, they are very inspiring. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the guy, uh, uh, Latimer, give me his Anton. 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 Oh, he's so good. The guy that actually puts it together for them. He works for Smug Mug, and he's like their creative... Uh, crazy guy man he's so good all right uh let's look at the next one it's it's these are watermarked after i said there was no watermarks mm -hmm. they're right here <laughs> so uh, here we go so I, i'm going to give you an, an overall these are very professional these are obviously professional doing these they're they're they all look very professional and they all look very old fashioned. They they are on the money as far as you know. They, yeah. There's... But but this is not where today's headshots are. This is, is just not where the you know like these are very old school. These were your your dad's headshots, right? These are not what headshots look like today. These just look very very. They also look a, all They're, a bit too. The lighting is very flat. And you know, it's 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 yeah. light. It's 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 good. I'm not saying yeah. that's a bad. Like it's not a bad. Like these these. It's just a yeah. style of just like it's a style that's gone. It's like that classic key fill yeah. back. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm going to do it in the right proportions with not a lot of shadowing. You know, it's it's just. Yeah. Very just, cookie cutter. It, yeah, it's very old school. Yeah. Now, I, the one I like the best is this one because the background looks more interesting. It was probably shot on location. Uh, I and, agree with that. that these, of all three, that, that one that you at least yeah. entered some element of the background yeah. and it seems like light is being cast. And one thing that I think would help and add some dimension to these is more shadow. That's what I'm saying. You're, yeah. you're overfilling, which this is a very old school look to fill yeah, it in. It is. It's grab like that the reflector fill is like fill only like a half stop off yeah. from the key. Yeah, it's you just know? even even if you were not counting the background or anything else. You know what? There's so many classes. We have classes on Kelby One, but there's Peter Hurley's headshot crew. Go look at what today's headshots look like. 
and they just don't look like this. These, these are, they're, they're fine and they're professional and they probably were happy with them, but they're all the old guys. <laughs> You're shooting old guys like old guys, but you can also shoot old mm -hmm. guys with, with what today's shots look like. And so that's what I would just say. I mean, they're, there's nothing to tell you really. I mean, I, I think that there's their way to filled in. Like you've got a kicker light on the right side here and you've got a little shadow on the other side, but you've probably used a reflector. So you're killing the shadow on one side. Your kicker lot's light is not bright enough on the other side. It's, I mean, we can go down that path, but I would just say it's time to start over. You know how to do all this stuff, right? You, you understand your camera and lighting and all the different stuff. Let's make it look like today's headshots look. If you go on LinkedIn and just scroll through your feed, you're going to go, man, these, these are old looking. So that's it. That's, you know, that's probably not what you wanted to hear, but you know, they're there. Yeah, and it's not, it's not, a, it's not bad. It's just, you should be able to change yeah. it though. Cause you're good enough at photography that you're taking professional yes, shots. Exactly, yeah. It's just time to, you can just modify the style. 2022. Yeah. Let's change the style. All right. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, how about these? Mm -hmm. Hmm. These are all pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, this one this. is disconcerting to me. And it may be the reality of how it was. But the front mountains are so bright. Yeah, and it it's goes almost to like... so dark. Yeah. Like, you can't think that sky lit those mountains. Yeah, it's almost like... This might have happened in reality. I mean, I could see that happening, but it's almost like there was like a, a harsh linear gradient over the top of it that then, yeah, it's like if you just tone that down on the bottom, it'd be tone, better. Yeah, just if you tone it down, you know, let's look at them side by side here. Without, yeah, with it just, it. that starts feeling more in balance than yeah, the one on just, the left. Yeah, it just... Like and I understand I that that could that, that can happen that, yeah. with violent storm clouds and blacking out the sun in certain places and letting it through other places, but it just it looks better on the right. That that would be my first thing is is creating a gradient like you did yeah. over the front. There you go. So that's what I did. I went to the just so we can see that again here. Let me reset it. I uh, let's get out of this mess. I went to the masking icon. I clicked on linear gradient. And I drag the gradient down the bottom so you can see that's the area that will be affected. And then as soon as you touch the exposure or any slider, that, that little red tint goes away. And uh, just did that. I went a little too far there. Yeah, yeah but in there. There we go. Yeah, All right. Yeah, perfect. that's it. And uh, this shot, you, you know, it's, it's too bad because this is obviously a very good photographer. You know what you're doing. Unfortunately you got so close to your foreground object i would i would want to see it low like this is like a shot of a what is this a cactus not a cactus what is it this? it is a type of cactus it's a type but, of cactus but but uh, it's not it, a pretty it's, cactus it's, it's too big of one for yeah. the background is yeah. what you're saying yeah it's like it's almost like you need one half that size and get close to it above it yeah. and then fill in that middle ground with the background yeah i mean look at the size of that thing is it 30 feet tall 40 feet tall look how small the road is behind it it's the world's largest well, guy i even see that there's a rock fence back there right. behind it too. i know you but see. you know what's nice though i mean they they they're they're shooting yeah, at no. nice times and good it's, light it's and not stuff. bad and, and this one's okay this is the least of the three i think well you definitely got to shape some light off of the right there it's so bright on that front versus the that. scene you know let's do that with a linear gradient, gradient. that's what i would do too yeah right there gotta go a little further there we go yeah. that just that right there i think helps quite a bit <coughs> but yeah. i think i think oh, there's a bigger cropping issue is that why do i need to see all these rocks this yeah, is about this whole thing them. is about the water that's why you used an nd filter and all that yeah, come in closer. Yeah. This is not bad, but it's it's not awesome either. It's it's okay. Oh, it's a stream. It's it's all right. Okay. But uh I obviously you know what you're doing. You're and you're going in the right direction. So just 
I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what I would tell them because they're they're actually pretty good. I think it's it may be subject selection and lighting. Be be aware of the lighting and and get some more interesting subjects. Like you're you're shooting in the right places, but picking that cactus was not like a hey way to go. <laughs> well, and too the the position of the river and how it was like it's yeah it's like make that more angle. prominent in the scene yeah. or something. Make the right. action. Let's yeah. see what we have here. Of course, that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. I think that's nicely done. Uh, silhouettes are not that easy to do because um, you have to have something very recognizable. What I would do is two things. I'm going to do them. <laughs> uh, I would, let's oh, just go ahead and open this all the way up in Photoshop. I would get rid of that that yeah. right there it's real and i know it's, it's there it's either it has to not be there or be so and, you have to have a yeah it and looks way better i like would that. go to liquefy and all of these things are very distracting and get a small brush and just tuck them nudge them in. in tuck them in you don't want it to be perfect but you don't want it to draw your eye either yeah you're just tucking it in it's just like you're kind of taking the wrinkles out. It's like you're using it as like an iron. Yeah, and you just... You're not going to get it perfect, though. And you don't want it to be perfect, yeah, but you, you don't want it. want it to draw your eye like, oh, what's that? I think the rest is okay. That, if you could show before and after on that, that would be huge, I think. Yeah. Be able to see that. Uh, yeah, here, or here we, we can see it right here. Yeah, but pull back on it. Like, I think you really... Like, cause that's what it is. Yeah. When you see, you see how like, it's really like, yeah, nah, that's the 32nd retouch. It's not retouch of the still, year. Like that's a also, huge there's difference. an issue right here. Especially with a silhouette because you want to make you it gotta, like a little, you got an issue right there. So let's, we can fix that easy enough. You use a clone stamp. Uh, yeah, I would select this area first, get really in there. Okay. That's not going to work. Let's use the, uh, what do we got? Well, I just use a very small clone stamp, I guess. I was going to seal it off first and all, but. Oh, I have it set to lighten at 50%. Sorry, I was doing a retouch earlier, so. I just get rid of that. Wow, do a better job than that. But the rest is good. I like this one. I think this is probably be the best to of, go the, to darken and of the group. Do it through the darken yeah, mode. I could have done that too. That had been, uh, that had been yeah. thinking. Yeah. All right. Um, this one I think is a is just a very unflattering photo to the subject. Uh, there's number one, blue doesn't generally look good on people. Blue is that color that just is not awesome. And I know that this color combination of a blue and a yellow can be good. It's not looking good here. I, well, I think so especially this looks better when you have like grungier or yeah, you know, like like an athlete or something. When you get that like edge light like yeah, that, this is this with the is, colors. This is it's it's particularly unflattering to your subject. Uh, this one is not nearly as bad. Your colors are more complementary. She looks better. Her pose is much better. This pose isn't awesome. This is this pose is better. This one I kind of like. It's got. I, I like where you're. I like where you're going with your color. I think your colors yeah. is pretty happening. In all of these, I think your color is happening. But uh, this one, okay, I would, that's the that's the ooh, weak link. Yeah, that's that's the big weak link. So keep going though. Keep keep doing what you're doing because you're doing good stuff. And I love that you're trying all these colors. We so, just saw that Scott, one. Scott, we got some questions. Yes. But one question is, what do you eat? What do you get at Maggiano's? Oh, well, I start with the Maggiano salad. I flip and love the Maggiano salad. I get it with extra blue cheese crumbles. Ooh. And then I'm, I'm either going to get the rigatoni with meat sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, that's a good one. Well, we, sometimes we get the family dinner where you get all kinds of different pastas, yeah, which yeah. is my favorite. It's my birthday. I'm like, can we get the family dinner? And I get the um, uh, a spaghetti aglio and olio. So basically, mm -hmm. you know, garlic and oil. And yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's very tasty. Simple, okay. Yeah, tasty. Simple, yet tasty. All right. Back All right. to our back to our story. Yeah, these are nice. Look at these. Ooh, that's really good. These are very nice. They're lovely. Just Yeah, I love the hummingbird. I I would I would, it'd be nice to bring the hummingbird out from that background a little bit more like using like if select only subject. If there was a program. <laughs> Go to mask. Mask. Select Go subject. Go to select subject i think it's gonna do it i think it's gonna do it Boom. and then 
Just, just, just give it a little pop. A little pop. There you go. A little you pop. You could even texture it up there. Mm, pop some texture in there. Just really separate it. Yeah, a little texture yeah. slider, a little little, little bling, pop. a little bingo. A little shadow pop. Yeah, just a little. Just a little bit. Yeah, look on the left and look yeah. on the right. And it's I not you subtle. Might, you I could go you more. Go a little more. Uh, there you uh, go. Right there. Somewhere in there. And if you get if it gets too too bright, you well, can then here, add a little contrast the, and it'll, st it'll still pop. The other thing, you could even go and double it up. You could do a select subject and then invert and only work on the back. Yeah, so then we could just go right here to crud. I, I'm used to working in uh, yes. Lightroom. There we go. Now... Oh no no we need to we need to do this again. Yes, yeah, so we need to create, go create new, new mask, mask select do subject. select subject, so it selects the bird, and then invert then hit it. invert. Now it's on the background, background, and then you can darken the background up a little bit. Now it's starting to look like we pasted it there. No, gotta, but <laughs> you can start doing stuff with the background there too if you wanted to like even yeah. uh, desaturate the background and saturate something. You could do a lot of different things at that point. Yeah, I just saying you could think about it like different ways. Add some more softness. Yeah, softness exactly. There you go. All right. Anyway, but this this we're nitpicking. Don't don't we're take too much. We're nitpicking. I mean, but that's the whole thing. Is it's got a nice photo. Then you this can one's just really nice. It. Look at the background. Yeah. It's just like a painting. This is it this does. is phenomenal. Boy, ugly bird. You though. need to be selling that. It's not the pretty bird. It's oh, it's vulture or bird. something. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, but these are these yeah. are great. Good job. Yeah. All right. What's next? Let's look at this. Oh, speaking of good job. Oh, whoa. I don't like that. I like that. Oh, they Long got four exposures. in here, or we got three? We got three. Okay. One, two, three. All right. Nice long exposures. Nice color. This one could have been longer, right? That's nice and long. See how misty the water is, mm -hmm. and it gives it that. And the sky movement. This one's just now. The problem may be uh, that the sunset. You wanted setting. the wave. If you know, it's hard because the longer you go, the more those waves are going to smooth yeah. out. And I don't know. That's still it, nice. And a nice, nice light on the rocks and good foreground. It's not a giant cactus. Yeah. So, and this is a yeah. good foreground, leading lines, yeah. everything. Uh, the only thing is, this is kind of curving, curving to the in. left. It's curving to the left. And this would. It kind of gets your head just tilting a little you, bit. You That's could what fix happens. it. It's not going to be super easy. What I would try is duplicate the layer. I'm going to go to free transform. I'm going to choose warp. And see if we can just kind of bend it over to where I don't feel like it's leading me off into the oh, to the hard one. Yeah, you're gonna have to spend a minute. I'm like five seconds on this is not gonna not gonna get the job done. But you can see where it could get the job done. You could definitely do it. It's just gonna yeah. take you a minute. All right, and you can kind of see here it's. See, I was leaning to the left. You got to just work on this. And maybe a perspective thing. Let me get rid of that. You might be able to do it with, pers with like, just... Nah. I was thinking you might be able to... Well, because you have that, those straight lines, too, oh, you might wait. be able to... Oh, I'm rotating and cheating it. Yeah. But I might it's have starting to... starting to look... Yeah. You know what else, too? The two piers that are they're, they're sticking out a little. So uh, what I would do, honestly, if it were me, and it is... I would take this one, put it up on its own layer, and then cheat it over so they're both straight, and then get the other one and cheat it the other way. So just go to that thing, <coughs> select it, and put it on its own layer, and then cheat it over a little this way. You could fix this easily. So then what you've got is, see? Yep, that really helps. Ooh, your your horizon line was crooked. Yeah, something like that. Easy fix, but good stuff. Well, yeah. well, well done. All right, we got to take a break. We're we're overdue for a break. Yes, let's break. All right, break. Let's go.
Hey everybody, Eric Kuna here with a new class for Kelby One, and it's on Boris Effects Optics. Getting started with the program, uh, we're gonna talk about getting you up to speed with using Boris Effects Optics 2022. Really excited about this, been using this program for a couple years now. This new version of it in 2022, a lot of new features. We can do all these Hollywood effects like lighting effects, color grading, particle effects, rendering effects, stylizations, lens distortions, lens flares, these effects that are really high quality visual effects that we can use on our photos. There's tons of presets that we can use. With these presets and these parameters, we can just with one click be able to buy a really high quality film stock or a high quality color grading effect to our photo but we have that ability to then go in and tweak all these settings. So this is a great program because it could be as simple and as complex as you want it to be as a photographer. So if you want to learn about how to get started with Boris FX 2022, join me over here on my new class on kelbyone.com. Hey guys, I'm Tubby and I'm going to show you two really cool products that we at B-Flat World sell. So the first one is our duo boards, which are double-sided hyper-realistic backdrops for food and product photographers. They come in two sizes. This is the larger side. We have all different types of textures and designs. These are some of the new ones that came out recently. And they also, there's a bag option available for them. And our other product, which is what we actually started the company with, it's called a V-flat. It's a foldable V-flat and it's used for portrait and studio photographers to control light on their subjects to either add light with the white side or use the black side to uh, subtract light or or even block like an unwanted uh, window light coming in. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, everybody, we're back. We got some quick questions here. Yeah, uh, we got a bunch of questions coming in. So, uh, Scott, um, somebody's asking, um, Daryl's asking, I heard a su your suggestion on a diffuser. Uh, what softbox do you recommend? So, uh, so Daryl, that's a lot like asking, what card you sh should I get? <laughs> uh, Daryl, just let me know what you're, are you using a flash? Are you using a studio strobe? Let me know what kind of thing you have. I got, I got great suggestions for you, but I need, I need, it needs to start with like, are you using flash or studio strobe? Okay. Well, I want to just give you both. If you're using a flash, go get, well, two things. Daryl, let me know if you have a flash or studio strobe, and I'll give you both when I get your answer. But I need to know what you're photographing with it. Is it mm -hmm. individuals? Is it weddings is it you know kind of give me a little bit i need to what you need to do with it and i'll give you some suggestions no problem all right and then craig's asking a question uh you know obviously you're showing liquify and i and saying i have never used liquify is there a book that tells me how um to use it well craig it's interesting that you mentioned this i i don't i'm not going to tell you to go to see a book i do have books i have a book called the photoshop book for digital photographers in which i cover liquify uh and i cover it in my book professional portrait retouching for photographers but it just happens that i did i wrote an article in this july issue of photoshop user magazine all on liquify and i go into great detail on uh, in fact i think i think it's in the last three issues because i did uh, uh, in july i did the facial aware stuff 
Yes, but I think but you didn't even show issue, that in Liquify. You were showing you were showing just how to move stuff around. That's what I showed yeah. in in the June issue. So if you're a Kelby One member, I'm guessing you probably are. If you're a Kelby One member, go download the last few issues because I'm writing a I'm writing a series called Photoshop for Lightroom users. Mm-hmm. So it's I'm starting at the very beginning and I'm going through the tools and I'm going through the filters and I'm I'm on the Liquify filter these last couple of months. Now I'm done with it now. So if you go and look Photoshop user magazine, download it, and 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 if you if you're not a Kelby One member, just send me your email address and I'll send you the issues. I'll send them to you so you can you can it won't cost you anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can go download them on the website. Um, the other thing is you've got classes. On Kelby One. Oh, yeah, we got all kinds classes of classes on, on, on retouching where I go into Liquify. So, Liquify is incredible. But I think that's what you're, what you're saying there with Liquify. What it is is when you're in Lightroom and then when you jump over to Photoshop, it's for a few things. Liquify is one, of, one of those of them. few things, yep. right? Liquify yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Uh, okay, all there right. we go. So Daryl says, I'm using a flash. Individuals and weddings are my subject. All right, there you so go. what I would do is I'd get a little, uh, get a Westcott it's not the small 24 inch soft box. It, it is called a rapid box. So you want a rapid box and ideally maybe the rapid box switch it's called, but get the, it's like a 40 inch. Cause if you're doing weddings, what like you're going like to have to do. Like a square soft box or an octa? It's an octa shape. Octa. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. It's a rapid box, but they make a rapid box octa, but it's small. So Just like a the, small, you then you there's the a XL. medium. I think it's the, the XL. XL. I think it's the Rapid Box Octa XL. So it's yeah, because that can do individuals or groups. It can, you can it can do individuals, it can do the formals, and it can do the bride and groom together. Yeah. So it's a nice and and you know the bigger the soft box, the softer, more beautiful light. You're shooting brides, you want beautiful light. I would get that for flash. And it folds down. And, and it folds down into a very like, small like case. That's a, yeah. a shockingly small case. And it's not, it's not, there it is. That's the one. The rapid box switch. Thank you. Thanks, Jason, in the control room. Uh, that's a really, really nice. Now, um, yeah, it's 289, which is, is not very much for as awesome as that thing is. And it's a switch, which means if you have studio lights, you can just change the thing in mm-hmm. the back and use yeah. it for your, so you can use it for flash. And then, you know, the studio, you can switch it to studio lights. It's really the, the whole switch thing's pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, Bill. I, then Bill's asking you, uh, I see you using Camera Raw. Any reason not using Lightroom? No, I use Lightroom all the time. It's just for the grid. It's quicker. I don't want I don't want to import all these and have them live in my Lightroom life. Yeah, you I just, just want to open them open for the them. grid, and then they're out of my life. But I don't want them in Camera my... Raw and Lightroom's develop module are, are the, the same, same thing. It's the same thing. It's so the that's, same thing. That's all. There you go. And then uh, we were talking about those, uh, you know, Diane's saying you recommended a Western Digital Passport external hard drive with a card slot in it for downloading when traveling. Unfortunately, Western Digital no longer makes one with a card slot. Any other Ooh. suggestions? Now, we did, I did, did yeah. go confirm that Western Digital did stop selling yep. the one that you talked about. But Western Digital does have another one um, that uh, my passport that has a, that. And it's so uh, well, uh, let's see, had another one. But mm-hmm. there's not a lot. It was surprising no, two or three. that there's only a few now. It's like there, there's less of them out yeah. there. Yeah. So Western so. Digital doesn't make the one with the little rubber padding around it. Like no. I had. They make this one here, though. Yeah. They're not cheap, but nope. they're two terabytes. So. Yep. There you All go. right. Let's mold. Let's roll on. Panchito. I've photographed Panchito on numerous occasions. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, these are very nice. nice. These yeah. are all good. Um, but I'm, we're going to give you a secret that's going to make them even better. All right, so this is good. You've got nice prop spin. Yeah, it's uh, crisp. Uh, this is very nice. Great timing. Mm-hmm. And lastly, this. Do you know what will make all of these better? A plugin called Topaz Sharpen AI. Yep. I'm telling you what, guys. For especially for aviation photography, it is the secret weapon. Wildlife too. Wildlife, well, wildlife, honestly, everything. Yeah, but, and all but you mostly, do, yeah. open it, let it suggest what it thinks is, it needs to do and fix it. Because I'm looking at these and they're they're fairly sharp, but look, Panchito's not super crisp. But you take that in a sharpen and it's going to look like yeah, you I'm gonna, nailed it. Yeah, let's go up here. <laughs> Filter, Topaz Labs. All you do is open it. It does the magic. Let it do its but thing. You hit the little 
hit this little checkbox right there. This one? Yep. And then it did the suggestion for you. Look at, are done. you seeing how crisp this is on the right? Now, every time I move I mean, it, it has to yeah, redraw. But look at the text on Panchito on the left and then the right. Yeah. It, now, these are subtle differences, but that's a huge difference. I'm going to go. Well, usually I just hit that. You know, oh, yeah. Again, I the audio. It's gonna. It's it's usually pretty good at picking up, but you can yeah. customize it if you wanted. To. But I'm telling you, for aviation photos, boy, look at that! I, I, you're not and, gonna and be able again, to see it. You're sharpening Holy a JPEG. Cow. You got to think you're sharpening yeah. a JPEG that's oh. already been compressed. Imagine yeah. you sharpening. Oh, but look the at this raw. Oh, look at the rivets and everything. All of a sudden, yeah, it's it all like, snapped. It's all like, there. If I'd have seen this, I'd have been like, dang, how'd you get it so sharp? I mean, it's like super sharp. It is the so secret that's weapon it. with uh, that. You've you're, you're got everything else, but you, you got to have that crazy sharpness. Good oh, yeah. stuff, though. Yay. Yay, you. Mm -hmm. Let's roll on. Ooh, Ooh, nice. Like, I love like that it. one. Ooh. You know what, though? There's one thing. Can we yeah. get rid of that this? That one branch, yeah. Get rid of that. It's and immediately the one what up, I saw. Just get yeah, rid of that. Two. This is so good. If those this two is branches. so good. Like, look at that. Look at the background. It's oh, so, yeah. Oh, God. This is no, a great I mean, shot. I look at this. Like that one bird is telling that other bird, do not come don't over land here. land over here. And, and I don't know if that's what's happening, but that's what it says. We're having fish tonight. <laughs> All right. That's a good one. That's a good one. That you know what it could use? Topaz sharpen. Topaz sharpen. I was about to say the same thing. I said, that's a good one. That if you put through topaz sharpen, I guarantee. And then you can do another thing in topaz sharpen that a lot of people don't know. And that is, <gasps> look at that. Do that little select thing and turn that on. Watch, What's that? it's gonna mask just the just the eagle. I, I guarantee it. Almost, almost. I'm gonna lie here, but I guarantee it. You're pressing a lot of buttons I don't use. <laughs> Ooh, but you're gonna. What that select does, if you're select this subject. is weird because it should be almost instantaneous. So I don't know what's going on with your computer, but it will select that eagle and not sharpen the background. Oh, look! See it? You can see the mask. It selected the eagle. Now it's Won't not sharpen sharpening the background back. because you don't want the background. The background's right, out of focus. Right. You don't, fact, want, to you don't want to sharpen that. it. That's what a lot of people don't know about Topaz Sharpen that I think they I didn't missed. Know that was in there. Oh yeah. That's oh, that's the secret. That's another secret weapon, because that what that allows you to do is only sharpen. Ooh, look how crisp that is! Now that you're you like, that's sharpen. so crisp. Oh yeah, you can see all the detail. Anyway, but but man, this photographer is nailing it. Yep. Oh, that first one. Oof. This is nice. Th these are okay. incredible. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, horse's butt. Uh, horse's butt is horse's always butt. yeah. The, that's horse's not, butt. What you were what you were seeing was the fog, the mist. And the scene that that's actually a perfect example of why wildlife photography is hard <laughs> because you can't tell the horse i need you to move turn around turn a bit. you can do that with your doing portraits of people it's really easy yeah. <laughs> all right let's see what we got here ah it's the donkeys well i like the last one okay yeah, I mean, it's, it's okay. fireworky. It's all it's right. Okay. I kind of like that you can see a little mountain range yeah. there. It's all right. Um, these are donkeys. Yeah, donkeys and noon light. Yep. Donkey, describe that, it. That's what the caption on Instagram would be: donkeys and bad, bad light. light. And I, I want to like this because I like the color, and but this thing in what it, what is this? It's not good. We also have some glows happening from the processing. Good. So let's get rid of that, right? Yeah. We don't, I mean, that's, that's, that ain't helping. Yes, that helps a lot. And then put a big moon in there. <laughs> well, this is the unfortunate part about shooting the moon, right? Yeah, I mean, the moon is, you got to get zoomed in on it in yeah. order for it to be bigger. These are, know? they're not bad. That, they're not awesome. They're okay. Yeah, it's okay. The donkeys yeah. are bad. The donkeys don't, come are, on. The donkeys are it's there's shots of donkeys in the middle of the day. Shots of donkeys yeah. in the middle mm. of the day. And they're so. not really if they were like fighting or All right. if they were I'm like gonna, I'm gonna you know. do a pop quiz for Eric. So Eric, the three photos we looked at, were mm -hmm. the did you think the exposure was off? 
Not really. Did you think the composition was bad? Not that bad, no. Did you think they don't know how to use their camera? Absolutely not. They know how to use their camera. So it's something else. Yeah. It, it's, it's, you got to shoot more interesting stuff. If you're shooting donkeys, you've given up. <laughs> Right. If you're shooting pictures of donkeys, I, and, uh, don't, like, there's pictures of donkeys that are amazing. It's just very hard. It ain't many. It ain't many, and you're gonna have to work at it. You know. The, but the what you, the, what that picture is is just that's the moment in front of me in the middle I'm of the day up. with bad bad light. This is where I'm I know at. how to use my camera. I know how to expose it. Donkeys. But it's a it's a snapshot of donkeys. Yep. Let's roll on. So this is it's a, uh, it's a cute family photo. Cute it's a family snapshot. photo. Uh, this is a cute family photo. These are not like photographs. These are these are literally documenting moments of documenting life. Documenting moments of life, and there's there's no concern about really composition or shadows or light or anything. It's just like, oh look, she's got a caterpillar on her finger or whatever that yeah. is. Oh look, my kid is sprayed themselves, and it's funny. It's it's not. It's way out of focus, and everything bad. Yeah, that 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 one's way. And out this of focus. is the worst one, <laughs> which is really bad. Number one, look at this ghost hand coming in from the left side. Seriously, it's a ghost hand. Whose yeah. hand is that thing coming in from the left side? You cut off the guy's head on the right. You cut off the little boy's hand. You cut off her fingers. The lighting's horrible. It's everything you could do bad to a family in one, one photo. Unflattering light, bad white balance. But you took the picture. You know how to. You know that you fired a flash. You overfired. You the flash. fired over fire flash. The the exposure is not like completely off. The focus isn't completely off. The the last one, the focus was way off. Yeah. So look, your flash is over here. So he's brightest. Then it gets a little darker, and then it gets a little darker. These folks are in all kinds of shadows. We got some work to do. You yeah. got some work. You yeah, got some work to do. I think yeah. Scott's just trying to be honest. You definitely got some work to do. You got some serious work. It to isn't. Do. Uh, you, you have a camera. You know how to you're take ta pictures. And you're taking snapshots. And you're taking pictures, and they, they're, they're okay. And I bet the people who look at them love them. Except for they're wondering, where's my head? Where's his head? But they would love them even more if it was a good photo. If it was a great You photo. did everything bad to one family that you could do. I love this hand. It looks like someone's hand is coming in from the side, doesn't it? Well, what Scott's bringing up, that's a, you really have to look at the edges. Look at the, what are you cropping out? Uh, where are the, like, that's where the shadows, like, leading your hand. Yeah. There's no, there's no arm to connect to that wrist. So it looks right, weird. Let's move on. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. I really love the light. Oh, that's nice. All of these are nice and they're all over processed. Yes. All you got to do, you've just gone too far on all of them. They're too vibrant. The colors are too vibrant and the, the, uh, the post processing is too crunchy. And you know where you can really see this? is the lines on the bridge. Yeah. So look at the edges and the lines on the bridge and how they almost look like they have this like consistent glow all over them. And that's just like you're yeah. pushing that. It's like, a lot of times when you're pushing that clarity too far, yeah. you're pushing uh, highlights and shadows too far, yeah. you're going to start but, getting that. But you're good. Yeah. Same you're thing just, there. You're it's just, just over processing. You're, you're just, just pushing, pushing these it. way too far. This is my favorite. Just because I love the moody and, light. And you know why you like that? It, they didn't push that one. They, no, they accepted what the exposure yeah. was and kind of kept it within I there. I think it's still too vibrant. I think you need to pull it off yeah. a little bit. All of these, if you could just pull them off a little bit, like this, this third one here. Or which one was it? Hang on. This one. Well, I'm, I'm I'm looking when I look at my screen, it's not as bad. When I look at the screen here in the in the monitor in the in the studio it looks pretty bad just back off some of the, just back off so here's one thing that you can do that might yeah. help at the very end right so these look like hdr you've done multiple exposures right go back and get a the regular photo and make it look regular right don't 
add clarity, don't add anything. Put it on top and line it up perfectly. You probably shot these on tripods, right? So it'll probably just line up. Yeah. And then just lower the opacity until you get a mixture of reality and then this. And you'll have something that looks real. I bet it's going to be 70-30. Yeah, 70-30. It's going to be about 70-30. Yeah. You need about 30% of the original photo back in that yeah. for and it to look be, normal. You'd be good. But I like your photography. Let's roll on. All right. Not bad. These are good. These are good. Mm -hmm. um, this is very good. The only thing I would say here, and it's a minor thing, I like the color. Uh, the, well, there's two things. Her, her, now she's wearing a white outfit. Can we tone that, if we can tone that back a little bit? Yeah. Right? And, and it's just, I, I would just, just, this is a minor thing. Radiant. But yeah. I, like, I like the photos. Yeah. So we're starting off, I think, in a very good place. So let's go and maybe take the highlights and, the, and that back and just, woo. Well, that's, that's a big, a big brush. brush. Yeah, I was doing, a, I, I got a cool woo. technique I'm doing. And just pull that back a little bit. Don't go that far. It's looking a little gray. So you got to find that balance, you know. But uh, I like what you did with her. I like her pose. I like the background. The other thing is, this is kind of bothering me. Now, that maybe it's just me that those lines are bothering yeah, me. I think that's just how the background is. Right. I know. And I'm not saying it, he, he, they did anything wrong. So let's, I think I might just, so it doesn't draw your eye, just straighten that out. I, I but anyway, I think that's good. That's that's very good. That's good, good, good. Don't don't even pay attention. This is nicely done. He looks really good. Um, the only thing that I would say, so you obviously understand lighting and you've got all the photography part of this down. This is going to sound stupid, but it'll make a huge difference. Getting him to straighten out his coat and his tie his shirt you know i mean some of this you can go and fix you can go into liquefy and fix this dent yeah, here making but like see all seams. these wrinkles and like you can see yeah. the other side like some of this stuff we talk about this a lot in product photography like if you can fix this stuff it's so much easier to walk over and fix his tie and let's pull your coat down and in the back just pull it all the way down and you know just kind of because this stuff it 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 uh it it stands out when you do it. It gets it, it is accentuated when it's in a still. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you freeze it in time, we see every wrinkle. When it's moving, when you're in person with yeah, somebody, you don't you don't, you see, don't it see it at all. The other thing I would say is, he looks disaffected from her. It's just a pose thing. He looks like he's just looking off. It's just, like he looks like take her out of it. Just pretend I'm holding my hand yes, over the yes. screen for Eric. Yes. If you take, if you take, if you take her, her out of it, it, you got a great portrait of him. Yep. But they're not connecting in the shot. So I would work on that. Well, her that's arms what's weird a about bright. this shot. Yeah, because it's like, it's, it's, it kind of looks like it's, you know, it's the couple shot. Yeah, it's like he doesn't even realize like she's there. He's like, yeah, it's like he's there, but she's, she's but, interested but in him. Photography but wise, in you nailed it. Photography wise, it looks good. And I particularly like this shot. I just want, a, well, it's, it's cropped a little funky. I love the background and the outfit that he's wearing. And I like him. I like this. And I, I'm very into cropping the top third of the head, but I want to see the top of his head. It seems, or, or, I mean, it's a cropping issue. This, whatever this is, it's a cropping issue. Can I go in, because I might be able to just fix this if I go in here. And I don't feel like I'm missing the, the forehead so much. Does that feel better? Yeah, I, think I see that, what you're saying. Yeah, I think it feels a little better there. And I would probably go and add just a tiny, tiny darkening of the edges. And maybe back off the vibrance just a little bit. Maybe throw a little more light in his eyes. But it's good. I, I really like where you're going with this stuff. So don't take any of these little nitpicky things the wrong way. Because I think you're doing great. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to help. We're just trying to help. Mm, nice. Nice. Woo. Oh, I love that. Little, little. 
It's too bright, isn't it? A little it? too bright. Also, there's a little bit of wide angle distortion that you might want to fix. And there's this person over here, and I don't, I don't know if you. I'm going to darken the exposure a little bit. You don't want it to look like the afternoon. Yeah. Maybe pull highlights and then add contrast instead of just darken the exposure to that. Now, the other thing is the bottom of this looks weird to me. Like, t take a look on, at, my, at me here. The whole thing looks like it's kind of leaning in. Like yeah, the, definitely because you're shooting a wide angle lens. You're right. tilting it up towards the sky, and then and you're I'm thinking, still having I'm thinking the foreground. I'm the sky needs to pull out, yeah, and then up a little, and then maybe maybe we can shift it. I, these things are driving me nuts here. I, I want them to be straight. Yeah, where they're leaning over. Like, yeah, I want them to be straight. That's better. Yeah. So here, here's where we were. See what I mean? It was leaning. Yeah, yeah that stuff drives yeah. me crazy. It definitely help happens when you're shooting that wide looking, and then you're tilted way up at that yeah, point. Yeah, I could just go a little bit more. There we go. So there's where it was, and there's where it's at. Yeah. Looks like you got a little glow down here you might want to deal with. I would get rid of that person altogether. But... That's that's and that's it, nicely yeah. done. It's you don't you see. You want the person. You're gonna have to add a little bit of light in there. So I like this one, Eric. This is your yeah, area no, of expertise. I, mean, I love it. I mean, I think it's very soft, pleasing light. Looks like you know it could be a blend of two exposures, but it's not so obvious that even if it was, that it, it draws your eye. And right. then it's overall, it's cool. I mean, I like the, the this color temperature. This one's kind of me. I like it too. It's all no, right. Here's the difference. You know, earlier when we were saying that one was yes. too vibrant. Yeah. This is where it should have been. Yeah. This is like, but it's you know vibrant, what it is? But it's not so far where they're pushing it. I know, off but the what's edge. the subject? Now that's the whole thing. It's just the layers, right? It's yeah. the it's the front layer, the middle layer, and yeah. then the cloud layer. But I it know, is but... just like a. It's just one of those shots where it's, it's a good shot, but it's, it, I see what you're saying. Like, there's no, no subject it's, to it's, it. It's technically really good. Yes. It's shot at the right time. You got yes. good clouds. There's you got no layers. Light. But I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. It's just what, so what it's am I supposed to look at? Mountain, like, yeah. this, it's very clear what the subject is. Here, it's very clear what the subject is. Here, it's just kind of, oh. it looks like one part of a pano. Yeah, yep. It looks like, you're like, okay. All right. But still very one good. Pano, don't, don't, get, don't take me wrong. We're almost done here. Color. Good shots that are over-processed. Yeah, it's another over-processing thing. Just 20 to 30% over-processing. And guys, this is it's so easy for this to happen because you sit there and you're working on it, you're working on it. You kind of have to go away for a day and then come back the next day. You look at them and you go, oh, I went too far. Take the original, put it on top, lower it to 30%. So there's 30% original. And then, because, oh, this is so crooked though. Now, what they're going to say is... Uh, yes, yeah, the what? way the mountains are, but you have to... Or the way the hill is, oh. you got to straighten it out. Yeah, you, you got it. Because then we all see it. It's just all we see. And we don't know if those rocks are crooked. There yeah. we go. And let's hit the constrained crop. There we go. So I just used the rotate button here in the geometry panel, which would be the lens correction panel. No, transform panel in Lightroom. Sorry, transform. Yeah, that's got to be straight. You can't have it like... Yeah, maybe maybe just suck out some of that vibrance and you know. Tone down the saturation. There you go. That's yeah, that's better. That's better. But the photography part, you're shooting good photos. This one looks just over processed. Look, you got a glow here and a glow all the way around. And it's not contrasty enough out there. It looks pasted into the hole. Just slightly overprocessed. I'm not wondering yeah. if there isn't a better shot here uh, you with cropping. That. Like, I wonder if you couldn't just. That seems better. 
Yeah, it helps. Because you don't need all that other excess stuff over here and excess stuff over there. You got nice leading lines leading the wrong way, leading you out of the photo. Can we just flip this and make it go to that house? You'd be all set. But they're not bad. These aren't bad at all. Just uh, over-processed. It's yes. very easy to get well, carried away with know, those. Before we go on that, we have to take our final break. Take one more break. I think we, we have two more, more images to go. I think one... Have, um, Two, two more images. Is three today. images. Three images more to go, and then we're done. And then we have uh, the prizes, and then we'll be done with the show. Yeah. All right. Like so we'll that. We'll be back here in just a couple minutes. Hey, Company One members, we're back with another class, and this class is all about demystifying panos and time lapses. We're out here at the Superstition Mountains in Arizona. This is gonna be a basic class on how you can get up to speed. We're gonna introduce concepts to you on how to scout for panos and time lapses. We're gonna talk about gear we need for all this stuff, and then we're gonna go through different scenarios. We're gonna shoot panos with multiple images where we go all across the scene showing the vastness of the landscape or the vastness of the Milky Way. And then we're gonna do other things like time lapses where we can show motion in the clouds and the sun rising, even going from night to day. And all done very easy where we can work up to more advanced techniques, but this is definitely something where we're gonna be focused on the basics. So join me at my new class on kelbyone.com. All right, guys, especially those of you who watch The Grid know one of my secret weapons for editing is to jump from Lightroom over to On One Effects 2022. All right, it's got so many cool things. It is my finishing move for all of my editing. Now, I put together a class because I know so many of you already have it or you're thinking about getting it. I put together a class that takes you from beginning to end. So if you're new to On One Effects, let me unlock the stuff in there. There is such neat, wild, cool stuff. And a lot of stuff, like always, is kind of hidden. But once you know these things, you're like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I go through all that. I start from scratch. I show you how to open images, how to go back and forth. I show you some little hidden, neat, little secret things that I'm telling you, it's going to change the way you work. It's going to change the way your images are going to look. You're going to love how they look. And you're going to find it all exclusively in my brand new class over at KelbyOne.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hey, we are back. Just a couple, just a couple more. Here we go. She's like a superhero. Yeah, the superhero of Duville High. These are all all nice. Yeah. They're all nice. Yeah. I, I the um, I think though a little more warmer white balance will serve you well. 
to just go in here and and add some more warmth into the the photos and maybe kick back the highlights a bit because they're they're just looking a little too cold and maybe also just a little bit of darkening on the edges so see how on the left it's a little yep. cold yeah it's just there and all of them are just people a little always look better people or a look warmer. better warmer yeah same thing here i i see what you're saying yeah they're all just a little cold they're all just a little cold so warmer makes people look better and the highlights need to come back like the highlights on her are just a bit too much look at so look at up here so look yeah. at this area of of her dress and we pull back those highlights And these were pretty nice, though. Yeah, I'll tell you what. These would be great for, like, Boris Effects Optics. <laughs> Do some craziness with them. This is my least favorite of the three. Yeah. A lot of it, is, well, the position and how it's running into, into the, tree, the tree. And that you don't see the top of her feet. Like, her feet are kind of cut off. The grass down there, I would definitely do like a gradient at the bottom to just like take that light off the grass and stuff. And then shape the light just a little bit more in post. Yeah. And I, I, I know what you're trying to do. I got to get the sign in there. It's, yeah, you're asking I know what you're a lot. doing, but it's just. You're asking a lot. Man. And then maybe we go create new mask, select sky. sky. Exactly. And tone that. Tone that down. Mm -hmm. Bring that down. There we go. Now we're getting better. And the warmth on her is okay. Yeah. Maybe we could throw a little more blue in that sky. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's. I know what you're trying to do with the sign, and but you know what might help is I don't know if we. It's your rule of thirds in it really well. Getting rid of some of that. How much of this you could get rid of? Yeah. Get rid of that extraneous stuff over there. It won't show you the before crop, but I don't know. I think it, I'm just doing it kind of quick. I think there's there's a better photo in there. It's just, I like it. I but mean, it's for, you're doing a good job. You're not. These aren't bad by any yeah. means. They're not, not. They're actually pretty good. All right. You need a longer lens. Well, you need a couple of things. You need a couple of things. And then you need not only longer lens, just, yeah, more that different right. moments. There's way different. There's way better moments. All right. So here's, here's what we're talking about. We've talked about this a lot. You're shooting at a 200 millimeter lens. A 200 is not going to get it done at an air show. You're, 400 is like bare minimum. Bare you're minimum. You're probably not going to get good You're not going to be thrilled. You're going to want a... 600, 500, 500 to 500, six. 500, 600, 600. Now, there'll be times where you have to zoom way in because they're flying right over your head and stuff, but it's not often. They're often, and that's what you're suffering from. You're, the, the shots don't look super sharp. And also, compositionally, you don't want it to be this close to the edge of the frame. So this would have been better as a wide shot. Right, and you're doing that because that's a hairier hover it, it has a jet that comes down yeah. where it can take off vertically, but but let's the other thing is there's no there's no contrast there's not there's not any dramatics in the sky that like lend itself to enhancing that. Let's see if we can reframe this shot. All right, so this is kind of what we want here. Let's pull this in and pull this in. We want room for it to move. Whoops, I went too far. I I uh, I need room behind it too. Hang yeah. on. We need some room behind it. Just one inch behind. Yep. Oh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> we want width. We'll add two inches behind it. All right, and then let's select it and do content aware fill. All right, now we can actually frame it the way it should be framed, which is something more like. That mm -hmm. right, so you need, and then you need topaz. <laughs> everybody, everybody needs topaz. Give it a second. 
Yeah. All right. So that's more of the framing that you want, but you actually want to be closer. I think you could even go as long as you don't get it too close to the edges. It's such a hard one though, because this is with these, like there's, that's the thing with you either got to be really close to get some detail or some action, or if you're wider, there has to be something going on in the frame yeah. that warrants you taking that wide shot. And it's like with this, there's the exhaust coming down, but it's not really that dramatic. And uh, I think what Scott's doing right now, like replacing the skies, big deal in aviation photography, because usually we get a lot of bald skies. Yeah, anything. Click on any button. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's better. I think the other shots definitely, uh, not only um, coming in closer, but replacing the skies. Like, also, that's, that's just... This is tricky because yes. you, you've frozen the propellers in the air and you don't want that. And that's what's hard when you're shooting those passes where you have a jet and a prop and plane. You got to do you the have prop to plane. do the prop plane settings. Yeah. So now you've got to drop down, and then you've got to be really good with your panning to get that jet. But usually, when the jet and the props are flying together, they're flying at prop speed to you yeah. know, keep up with each other. Yeah, so they're going you, 170 miles an hour. So they're usually pretty easy to track. But yeah, you definitely want to drop that because right now I think what is it like one one thousandth. You need to be more like one two fiftieth, one one twenty fifth, something in there to get that blur. See, see why that sky is so important. You can go one six six hundredth or five hundredth or something. So start with you got to get closer. Got to get closer. You got to get way closer. Even if you, now, even if you did get a one point four tele extender. That would take your 70 to 200 to a 280. Mm -hmm. It's not really close enough. It, it's still better than 200. It's better than 200. And then the other thing with aviation photography or wildlife photography as well, you're going to crop. You're, you, you still got to realize you're going to crop. Yeah. Even, even, if, even if I'm out at 600, there's times I'm cropping in, cropping in way more even at 600. Last one. All right, do you want you look want at the shadows the going down from the glass? And you, it's like an hourglass, right? So I can see this is taken probably 2.15 in the afternoon looking at the, the hourglass. So this looks like you're doing a pretty good job with an iPhone. These are, I see what you're saying, yes. Like, like here yes. you can see, I tried to get the reflection. I put my phone down low. You know, I focused in on, but like you know, the, the glass is, the glass way, is out of way, focus, out. way out of focus. Yeah, but I think they're, they, they were focusing on this because this and that's what's focus. so hard when you have something in your foreground that isn't in focus. Yeah. And it's this, hard. And, and these aren't like professionally done, you know, like, um, what do you call it? They're not, you're not using a food stylist. And this is just in harsh nasty light i mean it's almost like a diffuser would have would have made this look yeah, a lot better but it's still lot but you know what it is look how nasty that the pineapple looks well and then you have uh the edges of the pool at the top of the frame where you don't see enough of the yeah, it's like a like weird up here like what's cropped you know there's just like there's a, a lot, lot of stuff of things. going wrong here then there's yeah but you could clean up that pineapple and all that extraneous stuff yeah too if you that wanted pineapple to. would help course you could just pick a different pineapple <laughs> or put a diffuser over it and it or would look a, a whole lot better because i mean you're not going to you're not going to fix the fact that you shot it in horrible light it's out in the sun bright ugh. yeah i mean you can look at the shadow on the martini glass it was shot in the middle of the day yeah it's, I mean, just, it's just the shadows coming straight that's down. not like a professional photographer would never say put the stuff out in the harsh sunlight if they had to they would have brought in a huge diffuser Big. been shooting under a diffuser you don't even have to do a huge one you can do a 40 inch well that's what I mean. yeah. you, a, a, a big diffuser. enough diffuser yeah. to cover that yeah, these they look like snapshots taken with your phone, and you're doing uh, you're and you're trying to do photographic stuff, like you're putting the background out I mean, of focus. You could put it, you could get a white but sheet, but this isn't and even a good, It's there. not even a good looking martini. Yeah, like it's a good looking martini for vacation. It's not a good looking martini for food photography, especially when the martinis in the shadow. 
your background. And the rest is in the... In, in bright sunlight. Bright sunlight. Not it. Like, this would look better at 6 o'clock. Yeah. These are, these are pretty decent vacation photos to show your friends. But they're not like photography photos. They're just kind of... Hey, look, we went they to They definitely this. would be a, yeah, a different take on a vacation photo. Yeah. A, a snapshot vacation. Yeah, they're, they're vacation yeah. photos. They'd be like amped up snapshots. Amp it up. All right. Speaking of amp up, let's give some prizes away. Yeah, we got a bunch of prizes we're giving away. So, Bill Mitchell, you've won the Platypod uh, multi-accessory kit. And then Barb Min has won the On One Effects. Then Heather B was winning the Lightroom Classic book. Then Beth Fitzgerald... Beth Fitzgerald is winning the travel photography book. Jessica in MI is winning the V flat from V flat worlds. And then um, we have AJ Boremio is winning the duo boards. So there you go. And then P finally Pauline AKA Peewee is winning the how do I do that in Lightroom book. So if you just email us over at gridprize at kelby1.com, we'll verify your information and then send you out your prize. There you go. All now, right. I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you what it is, but Eric's got a great great uh, topic for next week's grid. It's going to be controversial, shocking, and other stuff. I think it's going to be like a few weeks ago when we blew some photographer or some photographers minds with the manual. <laughs> yeah, and we talked about mode. shooting in white, you don't have to shoot in manual mode. So that you do sometimes, sometimes, but, but not, not as much as they would tell you. Uh, yep. Not nearly as much. If you missed that episode, go back and watch it. Cause it's definitely oh, it was yeah. a great one. It was an eye opening one. Like yeah. people were like, I had no idea. I'm so, still getting people kind of me and like, I can't believe all these years. Yep. I've been fooled. So go watch that episode. Thanks to all of our sponsors and thanks to you guys for coming and watching us live. Congratulations to the folks that won prizes. Thank you to our sponsors for making those prizes available. Oh, yeah. Thank you to Christina and crew, Jason, Eric, Juan, Ron, and anybody else that I can name, Victor, and, uh, and Mr. Kuna. Yeah. The real man, the rocket man, the can of ham. He likes spam. He's been to Japan. I like air conditioning right now. Doesn't like ginger. He likes Marianne. See you guys next week. See Take ya. care, everybody.